presentation from SEMA. Um, my name is Ben Galoni, I'm the UK pre-sales manager and with me I've got Brendan Scullion who's the UK sales director. Um, we're going to go through a couple of um, case studies or customer scenarios where our solution is helping to um, solve certain problems. Um, feel free to ask questions um, at the end. Um, and our stand is uh, stand 21, which is kind of on the back wall. So um, feel free to uh, pop along afterwards. So um, Asima has a solution that um, essentially solves end user adoption issues. Um, what I'm going to do, do today is talk to you about um, uh, an energy supplier um, case study that we have. Um, and talk through some of that, and Brendan's going to talk you through um, a healthcare example in terms of how we're helping um, organisations solve their user adoption challenges within within that particular sector. So, what we found talking to, and this isn't specific to uh, the energy uh, customer in mind. Um, I think a lot of organisations have these challenges, but um, in this case, uh, they have multiple systems in their call centre their agents that have to deal with. Um, they are currently in a migration path between two systems from Siebel to Salesforce. Um, so they have that challenge of um, knowledge transfer, user adoption with a, with a whole new system. And um, they, as I said before, they have lots of systems to deal with that have lots of different information stored within the business. So. Um, having to, with two screens open, an old tab between four or five different systems, um, their lives be can become uh, horrendous when trying to find and search for information, especially new users into the business, new colleagues. Uh, there's a lot of challenges around uh, the user adoption piece there. So because they have this challenge, um, a lot of consequences for them as a business, uh, they have really poor first call rate um, uh, resolution rates. Uh, their biggest challenge is that um, different information um, being delivered to the customer by different call center agents. So they're not getting a consistent uh, approach or delivery of information. I think one of the biggest challenges is as uh, customers is whenever you phone up, if you ever have to phone up a call center, you speak to one person, put the phone down, phone again, speak to another person, you get a completely different answer. That drives everybody mad. So um, that's, that's probably one of their biggest uh, uh, challenges. And because of that, you get the customer churn and you also get the employee churn. We're supposed to be joining this big organization who are leading edge in their field but yet they've got all these complicated systems, they don't talk to each other, it's a nightmare to learn. Why do I want to stay and try and, uh, and, try and muddle my way through this when I can just go and join another, another organization? So um, those are, and, and I think this isn't specific to the energy industry, I think uh, most organizations have, have that challenge themselves. So what is it that the ASEMA solution does? So, we are there to try and help them become as efficient as possible by providing the next best action. So this is something that you might hear a lot. Um, the ASEMA solution is all about understanding what's happening and then providing information to an agent or an advisor um, to make the best decision while the customer's on the phone and essentially giving them help at the point of need. That is what our solution is about. In terms of um, what that looks like, um, there are some specific challenges that um, we've seen within the energy industry. And, and again, not, not potentially specific. I think a lot of organizations, especially in the B2C marketplace, have this problem. And um, that is that most organizations want to make sure their customers are self-service or self-sufficient. And um, one of the challenges that uh, organizations have is reminding or driving their customers to those digital channels. So our software, what it can do is look at the customer once, they've, once their information appears on the screen, 
understand whether they have an online account or um, there's usually an indicator within their systems to say this person is registered for online banking or um, online bill payments. Um, and if they're not flagging to the agent there and then, by the way, did you know this customer doesn't have an online account, they're phoning up to give a meter reading, you can tell them, look, it's really easy, you can do this online, and essentially, if you can improve your user adoption piece in terms of your customers by taking up that digital channel, you can imagine, even if you reduce your call uh, rates into the center by 25%, you're creating a large amount of savings in terms of uh, time and money um, with the agents dealing with more complex scenarios rather than meter readings and things like that. So that's one scenario in which our software is able to, to help um, this particular customer. The other, the other scenario that they have is where um, in this particular marketplace, contracts, but again, you could uh, port this to the telecoms, uh, mobile phone marketplace. If a customer's phoning up, again, we can read when their contract end date is. And if it's within 30 days, we can then, again, present a message to say, look, this, this customer's coming to the end of the contract. Do you want to provide a new quote to them? And then you've got that customer retention piece coming into, the, into play. So we're, again, trying to help the agent make the best decision possible about the customer that's on the phone with them and by providing this information. So this isn't training. This is user adoption in terms of um, helping the agents understand the information that's being presented to them in a much simpler interface. The next piece is um, around overpayment. So uh, this particular customer of ours, they have, a, um, they have a, a problem with people not paying them on time. So again, one of the interactions that they wanted was, has this customer, when they phone up, read whether they've got any uh, payments outstanding? And again, go through the process. Do you want to make the payment now instead of them phoning up again in five days' time to make that payment and making another call you know, essentially costing the business more money. So it, again, about providing more information um, to the agent about the customer that they're talking to and, and providing um, better service for that, for that individual. The last piece, I talked about it briefly, uh, this customer moving from Siebel to Salesforce. So the business, the agents, the advisors, they understand what the processes are, but they're gonna be just presented with a completely different set of screens. Again, we're able to understand what's going on in the application um, and help them at the point of need by presenting training information, guides, user information in terms of what to do next if they're stuck on a particular process. And just to give you kind of what that looks like, um, we have a, a very small um, video here. So when the customer is finally found, they have what they call a 360 degree view. So once we understand the customer and their information, you can see that our SEMA solution is loading on the screen and going off and finding all this different information. So here, for example, at the bottom, for those of you who could read French, um, it's saying that this customer isn't a gas customer. So it's gone away, found all this information and, set, and brought back, okay, We've got some promotion for the electricity. Do they want to sign up to this new promotion that we have? Um, they don't have gas. Do you want to talk to them about, do they have another supply for their gas um, supply coming into the building? Um, can we potentially bring them into a dual fuel, fuel customer? And this is, as I say, the solution working and understanding what's going on with all these different systems and bringing the information into a single screen. As I say, it's, uh, it's all about bringing um, the agents up to speed in terms, of, in terms of what they're doing. So that's one example of how the ASEMA solution works within um, an energy industry, but hopefully some examples there in terms of um, how it might work with uh, other verticals. I'm gonna hand over to Brendan now, who's gonna talk about um, healthcare. So as Ben uh, has discussed with you an, an example, I'm going to discuss a, a different example in the healthcare industry. Uh, uh, a set of hospitals in Paris had implemented a new uh, health system, uh, medical record system, uh, a very complex type of system 
where doctors, nurses, surgeons, admin staff all have to use it because the system covers a very large area. Uh, patient care outside, medication, uh, it covers um, data on patients, test lab results, uh, you name it, it's, it's a very complex type of system. And it was implemented uh, and the training for it didn't, wasn't that effective. So the staff needed more time to train because the system was complex and therefore it meant that they were going to have to spend uh, less, less time with patients. So there was a user adoption problem. There was also a, a data quality problem in that the entering of data was causing problems. So for instance, if you were entering a minor uh, problem, such as maybe the wrong address was seen as minor, that was going to cause a problem. Entering the wrong allergy information or not entering allergy information is a pretty serious problem. And the system was open for this type of abuse or this type of mistake. So the people using the system didn't believe in it too much, didn't like it because um, it was giving them problems and it was making the care for the patient not as good. There was also other systems um, uh, issues. For instance, when they were doing wound, wounds surveillance, they didn't have to enter it. There was nothing mandatory that, that was prompting them to, to make it. Uh, when they were entering medical information, there was multiple areas in the system where they had to enter it. Uh, if they only entered it in one area, it basically meant, for instance, that the doctor wouldn't get that information for the ongoing care when the patient was out of hospital. There was a lot of particular issues with, the, with that software. Now, that isn't unusual. The actual market, uh, there's been analysis done on data input and errors in the medical uh, industry. 17% uh, of medication in, uh, issues were technology related. And they actually, when they looked at that, 61% of that was order entry information where the system and the technology and the user weren't working very well together. It was too complex, the knowledge wasn't there. Um, in the other uh, areas as well, uh, the figures were 51% um, order entry, again, 50 to 60% of the issues found that were causing these problems was the actual interface between the person entering the information and the actual system, okay? So it wasn't just a problem for this set of hospitals. This is a known problem throughout, throughout the industry. The solution for this was the ASEMA software. It was implemented as, and it's informed now, as called the digital coach, is what it's known as is a, in the hospitals in Paris. The first thing was that we created some clone content effectively a simulation of the actual system so people could go in and practice and practice without making mistakes. They could practice as many times as they want, they could practice all of the processes, learn how to do that and that was brought into the induction program um, and it effectively meant that people could practice in their own time when they had a few minutes in between uh, uh, their work, they could practice from home uh, and they could effectively get used to the system's processes. When they then went on to the system, ASEMA has an intelligent overlay that sits on top of the live hospital application system. And it provides help and guidance. So it gives the, uh, the end user a real feeling, a secure self-help feeling that I'm in this complex system and I can ask for help at any time and I can get it. And the system knows who I am, it knows what role I play, uh, it knows what job I do, it knows what part of the application I'm actually in, so we will give them help and guidance. And that guide can even be a step-by-step -step guide through a process. How do I enter allergy information? Uh, I haven't done it for six months. Can you remember how to do it from the training that you received maybe a year ago? So it will guide the end user through a step-by-step -step process. We actually put a chatbot in. One of the problems that, uh, that they had uh, was 
uh, nurses and doctors and some of the admin staff didn't know uh, exactly how to deal with scans. Did, when somebody wanted a scan, were they going to input a scan? Were they going to de- um, take out a scan? Were they going to print the details of a scan off? Uh, did, they want to, um, did they want to manage the document uh, and, and input more documents or output more documents? It was a complex area, so they put a chatbot window in uh, where the, the, the nurse can actually speak in their natural language and actually just say, this is what I want to do, and the system then tells them and guides them to the appropriate place. Whenever there is a change, that something is different from the day before, or I've done something for six months and now I want something to change, we basically put a notification up that actually tells them that something is different and effectively then points them to the appropriate place. We put data validation in as well, um, validating uh, information and prompting people to enter information that was valid. So when they got to the new medication piece, uh, where they had already entered it, they were prompted to actually do it in the correct way. And we implemented a link to IBM's Watson to provide what's called augmented intelligence or artificial intelligence. Uh, one of the examples of, for that, we've got a little video I'm going to show you in a second, where um, the nurse or the doctor was prescribing medication and the system, we take that and we send it to IBM Watson and it compares to see whether it's complementary or not. And we're not just sending the, the details of that uh, line, we're also telling them if the patient has an allergy, if, if the patient is pregnant, if the patient has other uh, conditions. And IBM Watson then sends us back information to say this isn't complementary, and we put it up on the screen for the doctor at the time he's prescribing. So it's improving the decision making of the actual end user working on the system. So it's called the digital coach. And we've got a short video now to show you how it works. In this video, we'll see how Assist with Watson for Healthcare intelligently supports clinicians going through highly critical processes in JAK medical software. In this first use case, we'll see how the solution can prevent prescription errors. Here we have Dr. Van het Hof working on a cancer patient's record. Unsure of some information on the screen in front of him, he clicks the Assist node, which connects him to a live digital agent, able to answer all his questions. After obtaining his answer, the doctor goes to prescribe aspirin, wanting to alleviate the pain of his patient. The digital agent reads information from the patient screen, reviews their current prescriptions and refers to external public and private databases and its data store of relevant documents to see if there are any known drug incompatibilities with aspirin. On finding a potential conflict, the agent alerts the doctor with a drug compatibility check and gives a link to the source documents found, so the doctor can make an informed decision. After reviewing the information, the doctor decides to prescribe paracetamol instead. As he progresses through the prescription and is about to record the quantities, the agent, recognizing that the patient is underage and needs different dosages, pushes a dosage alert to deliver the recommended dose to him, again referring to its external data sources. After completing the prescription, the doctor marks it as needing pharmacist verification before it can be issued. We now see the pharmacist who works on the same JAK system. The pharmacist team receives numerous prescriptions a day that need verifying, but the system doesn't have a way of bringing the urgent ones to the top of the list. As the pharmacist reviews a prescription for a particular patient, the digital agent recognizes that the prescription for a patient with cancer has been marked for verification, and this takes priority, so it pushes that record to the pharmacist for immediate action. The pharmacist now verifies the prioritized prescription.
Dr. Van het Hof has finished for the day. Dr. Lucy Smith is the next oncology doctor on duty. As she logs in and searches for the hospital patient files, the digital agent recognizes that she is an oncology doctor who is also qualified to issue the now verified prescription and pushes this information to alert Dr. Smith of immediate action. Dr. Smith issues the prescription for the oncology patient. Assist with Watson for Healthcare is a solution bringing greater accuracy on patient data, bringing better decisions, faster, helping to save lives. So that's uh, effectively the end of our presentation. Thank you for uh, listening and attending. We're on stand 21 uh, over by the far wall. If anyone has any questions or wants a demonstration of the software or has uh, uh, even just wants to have a chat about what we've done. Okay, so thank you for your interest. <laughs>